You know, I saw our next guest, and then you I did? didn't. Oh, now I see her. What? Maybe if I just say, hey, I see our next guest. There she is. Hi. Ah. How are you, pretty lady? She's coming over. See, no one's really going to be sure if I actually had uh, you scheduled as a guest or if I just said, hey, pretty lady, and managed to get you to come on stage with she me. She just wandered on. Out of the square. That's what happens when you're in Portland's living room. All kinds of random people Look, show Look, if you can color coordinate your skirt with your hair, you can come on my show. That's true. So any of you who come down into the square with oh, so color coordinated... Frankie qualifies as yeah. well. Okay. Hey, <laughs> so do you want us to stay? Do you want us to go? You've brought a friend. You're we doing, we yeah. can leave you I alone. I brought my purse just in case because I'm a lady. You might need it. I like to bring my purse. Do you need us? Um, Should we be here? <clears throat> Um, well, I just I have a I have a piece uh, to read, and uh, Sean McGrath from Livewire uh, is also going to read a piece. Sean got a woo from a lady. <laughs> Maybe we should yeah. introduce. I'm sorry, I was I, think, I was impolite. Maybe I think we should she's a little introduce Gordon Hammeister because <laughs> oh, I forgot high. to. And I also have a swear in my piece. It's a swear. It's a big one. It's a big swear. Really? What, can I say it? On a scale of one to ten. Like where? What's the swear? You know, it's the it's the F one. You, you need to edit the, yeah. Yeah? It's because we're in the square. Can Sean beat me? We're in the, we're in the square. <laughs> yeah? I, I see some children over yonder somewhere. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah, no. You, you, you edit that. I think we're going to let you do your thing. Okay. And then you can introduce Sean. All right. Or you can ask us to come back and introduce Sean. It's up to you. No, I can probably introduce Sean. Okay, all right. I've then I think we're going to let you do your business. Okay. All right. Everyone, Courtney, oh. let her entertain Hi, you. <laughs> Hi, Megan. <laughs> um, okay, well, this is a... <clears throat> I'm the, uh, I don't know where the, oh, hi. I'm the host of Live Wire Radio. Uh, it's a show on Oregon Public Broadcasting uh, that airs on uh, Saturday nights at 7 o'clock. And um, this is just a, a piece I wrote. It's, it's July in Oregon. Uh, it's when all the bikes come out and um, when it's not winter in July, all the bikes come out. And so this is a little story about uh, when I was growing up and a story about a bike that I loved and, an exper and a romantic experience I had while on it. It's called Carried Away. One of, the rom one of the most romantic moments of my life came to me by bike. My bike, actually, and I was in love with it. It was a bright green Schwinn Fair Lady Stingray with yellow and green daisies covering the banana seat. No streamers, no basket, nothing that might have increased my aerodynamic drag. I was nine years old, and at that point it was important that I clocked less than eight minutes to get to the Dairy Queen. It was June of 76, and I was experiencing my first summer of independence. It was the first time I can remember taking real pleasure in solitude, tooling around the neighborhood with only dusk and cul-de-sacs as my enemies. We lived in a subdivision called the Dam West in Aurora, Colorado as in West of Cherry Creek Dam. Whoever thought this would be a great name clearly didn't grasp the concept that one cannot hear spelling. Although we had it easy, the people I felt really sorry for were our neighbors and our sister subdivision, the goddamn effing East. <clears throat> our house sat at the top of a block long incline with a sharp turn at the end of it. My brother Scott loved it. He and his friends would use the speed of the incline to their advantage. They built huge, architecturally unsound skateboard ramps that, would then, that they would then use to jump over long lines of each other. This was really convenient for the parents on our block, as it was much cheaper for the ambulance to take three boys to the hospital than one at a time. I'd love to regale you with tales of Scott's successful jumps, including one over my father's 1968 Chevette, but I'm a bad witness. I only saw them through the tiny slits between my fingers. Unlike Scott and his lucky-to-be-ambulatory friends, I had respect for the incline. I had to navigate it a few times a week to get to my piano lessons with TJ Scranton. He was a scruffy, bespectacled, real live stoned hippie who, much to my chagrin, had rejected organized religion but still believed in the Protestant work ethic. So every Tuesday and Thursday, I would plop my sullen ass, which hadn't seen a piano bench since the week before, on my banana seat and pull out of our driveway. To control my speed, I'd keep my feet either on the ground or holding steady on the pedals for most of the incline. This didn't gain me any respect from my brother and his skate punk friends, but my mother was pleased that she had at least one child for whom it didn't matter which laundry detergent worked best on bloodstains. 
One Tuesday, as I was loading the sheet music for Mandy by Mr. Barry Manilow into my backpack, my brother's friend Greg Guffey strolled up. Greg, like Scott, was two years older than me, and you could clearly see those additional years of wisdom in the deep, dark wells of his blue eyes. He and Scott were busy that summer making a stop-motion animated film wherein a huge bird flies over a village and terrorizes it by pooping an entire jar of mayonnaise on it. He was like Spielberg, but with egg-based condiments. Where are you going, he said, casually tucking his curly blonde hair behind one ear. He looked just like Robert Plant, if Robert Plant were 11. Stupid piano lesson, I said. Cool. Later, he said. Yeah, later, I replied, and started to take off. Discombobulated by being in the presence of genius, I had failed to take off in my usual careful way. In fact, I had just taken off, just jumped on the seat and started pedaling furiously down the hill. In seconds, I knew I was in trouble. I was going way too fast, and the turn at the bottom of the hill was speeding toward me like it had its own bike. Suddenly, I had a decision to make. Either try to take the turn at a speed I knew I couldn't handle, or fly into the Miller's rose bushes and hope for the best. I was taking the turn. Yes, I'd probably fall and pain would undoubtedly ensue, but if I'd hit the Miller's bushes, Lorna and Bob would rush out to help me and want me to come inside. Eventually, the topic of conversation would turn to the M&Ms I stole. I sold them for choir, but never delivered because I ate all four boxes. The Millers were just one of five families I'd managed to avoid for most of the summer. I was taking the turn. I knew immediately that I was going down. I was a bike pussy. I'd never gone this fast on a straightaway, let alone a turn. So I just braced myself for what was to come. In my attempt to make the turn as wide as possible, I steered the bike toward the curb. That's where I hit a nasty patch of gravel and my front tire slid sideways, taking the rest of the bike and me with it. Ow, ow, ow. I was pretty sure I'd scraped everything. I did an immediate body check. Ow, my hand hurts, ow, my elbow hurts, but mostly, ow, my knee hurts. I was taking a shaky inventory of the new six-inch long scrape on my left knee, filled with gravel, blood, and pride, when I heard the footsteps. Please, dear God, don't let it be a miller. Then I realized it was coming from behind me. I turned to see Greg rushing down the hill toward me. He was wearing those running shorts with the white stripe up the side, you know, the ones no one ever really ran in. But there he was, running. Geez, are you okay, he said. I'm not sure, I said. It's my, and before I could say knee, I started sobbing uncontrollably. I was taking the turn, and I thought I could take it, but I couldn't take it, and the M&Ms are gone, and I loved your movie, and then it just got incomprehensible. He nodded and shook his head at the same time for a minute, looking at me with a combination of concern, confusion, and severe unease. Sure, he'd seen his sister Monica cry thousands of times. In fact, most of the time, he caused it. He was, after all, the one who dubbed her Monica Mental. But this was different. Suddenly he was the boy and I was the girl and it was his job to protect me and do whatever it took to make me, for the love of God, stop crying. Okay, he said, let's go. And then Greg Guffey, genius, filmmaker, skateboard hero, put one arm underneath my back, used the other to cradle my knees, and he picked me up. And even with as much pain as I was in, it registered. Greg Guffey is carrying me home. I'll probably lose my leg at the knee and go to school all, every day in a little cart, but Greg Guffey is carrying me home. Melanie Messino is gonna pee her pants. I might have already peed my pants, but Greg Guffey is carrying me home. When we got to the house, he plopped me down on our front steps, rang the doorbell and turned to go, leaving my mother a blubbering, bloody gift. You gonna be okay, he asked. Yeah, I think so, thanks, I said. You really wiped out. I know, I said, pulling tiny pieces of gravel from my elbow and trying not to wince. That was pretty cool, he said, smiling this time. I know, I replied. As Greg walked away, my mother came out and tended to my wounds, all the while expressing her shock at which of her children showed up bloodied on her doorstep. And even as the back teen sting hit over and over again, I began to imagine all the possible ways I might endeavor to injure myself that summer. The end. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Sean's waving at somebody. Um, so we also have Sean McGrath here. Uh, Sean is one of the is one of the writers for Livewire and a member of Faces for Radio Theater. And Sean has a little something something that he would like to read for you guys. <laughs> um, you want, I'm gonna go. Uh, you can stay. Whatever you want to do. 
It's exactly what men say to me all the time. I'm going to go. Well, in the same vein as Courtney's, I'm going to read a little uh, love letter. I wrote this one recently, and I, I need to apologize if I get a little, a little worked up. <sighs> if I get choked up, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. My beloved Erica, the past 46 minutes since we last Skyped have been agonizing. This friggin' quarterly budget meeting just won't end, but thank goodness for my Blackberry. I use it now, the poet knight that I am, to pledge my love. I loved you ever since we met three months ago for hot wing night down at Pluckers. I can't bear to be away from you, my darling. You are the swan in the pond that is my heart. You are majestic and fanciful, and you love bread. When I think of staring into your eyes, those beautiful sawdust brown eyes, I can't think of anything else. And even after the Ibex kicked you in the head at the drive through safari park, I found the way your left eye crosses to be just as captivating as when it could hold focus. You make me want to sing. Sing, I say! Sing a song about eyes or pretty girls. <laughs> My goodness. It's been quite a roller coaster ride these last few weeks with your ex in town and the trial going on, but through all the ups and downs, I stand at your side, handcuffed by love. And my God, the sex times. Even though you're only my second lover, you make me feel like Casanova herself. Truth be told, I was a bit nervous our first time together, but you're strong. Milkmaid calloused hands on my shoulders and your tinny voice box yammering instructions were the two beacons I needed to aid me through the turbulence of your love ocean. And swathed in the afterglow, cradled in your arms as you patted my sweat-dampened brow, I felt I had found home. Erica, I have premium cable television and have seen many women. Yet never have I been so overcome than by your gut-punching beauty. Your beauty is like a raisin, organic and sweet and sun-kissed. Your hair is like the French flag on a windy day, tri-colored and billowy. And although I have pledged my allegiance to the United America, I shall salute you for all the days of my life. Your lips are like a Ferrari, red and fast and expensive looking. Yet it is not your appearance that jiggles my aorta like a unmanned fire, ho fire hose. I love the times you pretend you're a wolf and walk beside me through the park growling and marking your territory. I love the way you insult me in front of your dad and I love the fact that you skim the till at work. The board game store at the mall should pay you a lot more than minimum wage and you gotta make up the difference. I get it, and I get you, Erica, Erica. I know that you will stay true to me on your girl's only trip to Houston for Stephanie's wedding, and know that I will take no other into my bed. We are young, we are strong. No one can tell us we're wrong. Love is a battleship, and you've hit E4, F4, G4, and H4. Direct hits, baby. Direct hits. Well, my meeting is wrapping up, and I can be on Gchat in like 10 minutes, so I will click send now and end this love letter to you. Remember, our love is like a bee, my darling. It is soft and yellow, but it can also cause great pain, stinging pain pain that makes your face swell and your throat close. And if that should be my exit from this world, know that since I have tasted heaven on earth, I'll know what to expect. Goodbye, baloney head. Goodbye, you. Send.
makes, love makes you crazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Oh, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jeez. Hold going? your horses. God, Courtney, my train. would you like to come back up come as on, well? Courtney. Wait for me, Max. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Trying to run off the stage without talking to me. I really don't think I'm going to be okay with that. That's never happened. <laughs> Wahoo! Whoa. You okay there? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> oh, I, I knew that. Hello. I knew we were going to have to come back up. Yeah. S stairs. <laughs> we Next still have seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they, you know what? Here, well, here's what happened. The band took the, the stairs. The band stole the stairs. Yeah. And so now I've got like a splinter in my knee. Target and for tomorrow. And damn the stairs you, have just Charlie Awesome, you. stealing my stairs. Bring the stairs back. No, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Oh, you're fine, you're fine. Babe. We're just it's okay. joking. It's okay. We're just joking. He, he's very <laughs> earnest, and he takes things very seriously, like me crying that he took my stairs, which he did. They were Whatever. right there earlier. They're, they've been moving around quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, and they stole them. So how are you guys doing? We're good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. we're both good. <laughs> good. Good. We're better now. Good. We're, we're, we're better that we vented a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think we yeah. both really we felt shared. like we shared some stuff. And yeah. You've gotten that better. off your chest. I feel closer Everyone to you two. Good. I'm and glad. Yeah, that makes yeah. me happy. Because mm -hmm. we were so close before. Right. Yes. And I feel like I we've only grown closer the in the last Sean McGrath. First time. Sean. Hi. Rick. Hey, Rick. Uh, right. Sean was actually, uh, he played uh, the lead role in Roadhouse. Oh, oh nice. Very nice. Excellent. I played Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Sean was, huh. Sean was I, Roadhouse. I was Roadhouse, the Roadhouse. We couldn't, get, we couldn't get Roadhouse to come down. We really before. wanted it. There were too many of you. You got two yeah, of us. Yeah, there were a few yeah. of us. Yeah. 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 I know. Well, three, because yeah. we've got Megan Kate, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hopefully, we're coming back. She was the giant skank. Yes, yeah, she was. I'm hoping I can get her to dance on a table for me later. <laughs> It was a real stretch for her. She put her fingers <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting confirmation that that is in she fact did true. Times. Lushy yeah. confirmation. Are we still on the air? Is that yeah, yeah, we are actually. Yeah. We'll be on the air for another. Got the five uh, second uh, delay. For another going. really long time. Okay. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh boy. Why do we do this thing? I don't know. It's feeling We've late. got like... It's like 20, Nightmare on Elm Street, kind of. 20, oh, 26, 26 hours, hours and five Great. minutes. <laughs> don't yeah. close your eyes. You know, the last two hours are a breeze, to be honest. They're easy, yeah. And this time for the last two hours, we'll have Stephanie Strickland again. Yay. Yeah. She she's makes here right now looking hot. Yeah. Well, she's going to get dance lessons with us. That's exciting. Yeah, you guys stand for swing dancing. I, I, could, I dance? could use oh, some swing. of that. All right. Yeah, stay for swing dancing stay around. lessons. That's yeah. what, in five minutes, we're gonna we're gonna have Frankie T's give us swing yeah. dance lessons. Yeah. And the twing shifters are gonna play all They throw you in the air and then yeah. you go underneath their legs and then they wrap you around their own body. There will yeah. be none of that, Griggs. Yeah. He's demonstrating. Yeah. He's demonstrating. That I can move. do that. Yeah. There will yeah. be no yeah, throwing me uh, on ouching and painfulness. Okay. Okay, get the all thumbs right. up. They're all good. I received a thumbs up from my dance partner. He knows how to dance. I do not. I'm going to damage him. I'm fairly certain of it. <laughs> but you're Frank teaching the world a skill. So. Yeah, I'm we are. teaching the world to damage iPhone developers. Yeah. No. no. Yes. No. Is that Let's what you do, do Rick? No. 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 I'm not dancing oh. with Rick. No. I'm dancing with Jason. Dancing with oh, Stephanie. Okay. Stephanie's going to damage Rick. We didn't want to injure anybody who had to go through the rest of the 26. Hours. Even if he right. gets hurt, it's probably going to be funny. Yeah, it's exactly. Good, it's, it's good. Good. <laughs> yeah. You know, good Webcast. comedy knows no shame. So right. I, think, I think we need to handle a couple things. Okay, what? I think we need to have them promote themselves. Okay. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, oh, well, uh, we're both on uh, Livewire, which is on OPB at uh, seven on Saturday nights, and we also podcast uh, on iTunes and LivewireRadio.org. Um, I'm also, uh, on Wednesdays, I'm the new chick on the Court and Fatboy podcast. Oh, Ooh. excellent. Um, which I'm loving. Uh, those guys are pretty fantastic. Yes, they are. And They're hilarious. Great. Yeah. And then Sean has a new thing. I got a new thing. I got a new bag. <laughs> um, I will be in a five-person sketch comedy group in September called Sweat. Sweat. Um, it will knock your socks off or your money back. And then... Nice. Um, what if I don't wear socks? Uh, well, it'll knock those cute little black shoes off you. Okay, well, that's fair. <laughs> well, we'll, give, we'll give them back to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then also, if you if you like the movies, um, Every Man's War just came out on Netflix, which is a uh, a locally produced World War II movie that's been in production for probably since the war actually ended. It feels like. <laughs> uh, but uh, myself and and other great local actors are in it and follows this true story. Um, during the Battle of the Bulge. So it's called Every Man's War, and it's in Blockbuster and Netflix and 
cool. the red boxes. So if you want to see me, you know, in a get blown up, get blown, get up, blown up, and all that stuff, <laughs> in a more nice. serious Good. role. Yeah, right. yeah, and shoot Nazis and. Mm-hmm. I check it out. It's hysterical. It's really funny. <laughs> it's a it's death. a light sort of a Those black comedy. Work comedy. So things. much death. So much oh, death. Hysterical. And, oh. and where can we find you guys on Twitter? I I don't know. Thing. Sean I think is on Twitter as a lurker. I have. A <laughs> he won't tell anybody Sean. what his username is. I'll, I'll friend you tonight, but creepy dude. Uh, you, it, it's nothing. Yeah, it's just creepy little dude jokes. Six I try seven out. two. <laughs> exactly. I'm Weisenheimer on uh, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. That is my that's my. Handle. I think I'm Jerome Wisdale. I mean, I think that's that's from Soap, Soap Street. All right. Okay. Jerome Wisdale. I think that's me, but <laughs> I'll look it up. Yeah, check it out. I'm not con- I'm not confirming anything right here. All I'm, right. Well, this thank isn't you. this isn't Frost Nixon, is it? No, no. Easy. No. You guys are just yeah. you're too hard, much hard hitting. Hard hitting well, questions are coming out now. This is a British guys. tabloid Sorry. show. This suddenly. is what we do. This is I'm what, out of here. This, this is what people show. pay for. I'm not attacking until I start hitting you with a microphone. Frankly, so yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye well, Sean. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you so much. I'm gonna have to go take care of him. I think. Yeah. I know. He looks. He needs some. His hair looks upset. Is what it is. His hair. He's kicking over Mike's hair looks really upset. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry that they can't see that. What's going on right now? Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for doing this. This is a pretty extraordinary thing. I I had to cool down. I'm sorry. It's it's all it's all good. (laughs) Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Have a a great um you know thirty hour. Yeah. Thank. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. So we're gonna talk for a second. Okay. I think I think. Hey, are you guys getting ready? Hey, Twang Shifter. Are you Twang Shifter?